Hi there, this is uh, News Peaks, Logan Symposium 2016. I'm James Topley, here with me is Edwy Planil. You've been a journalist for around 40 years. I was wondering, out of all of your uh, stories that you've covered, which has had the deepest impact for you? Probably the, the first big story. It was uh, more than 30 years ago. It was what we call in France the Greenpeace Affair. You remember that? You the, are, you rain, are... the, the Rainbow Warrior. <laughs> the Rainbow Warrior. It was in 85, in the last century. The French Secret Service uh, make, uh, put a bomb on this boat of the Ecologist Movement, Greenpeace, which were in, in big campaign about a French bomb in the Pacific area. And uh, that was a big secret, a big uh, secret of state and a big lie of the French power uh, in the face of all the world because it was the Occidental world, New Zealand in Auckland and France and they are alliés, it's the same world and you make what? A terrorist attack. <laughs> That's, that was ter terrorist government, terror, official terror. And um, I broke the story, I find just the card, you know when you say a castle of card and you must take the good card and, uh, and the lying was, was, uh, was finished. And uh, I was really young and uh, uh, I don't uh, think about the big power in front of me. I was with, uh, like naive, like, uh, and I go and I, in two months we arrive to, to, uh, to end the story. But what I learned after that, it was in all the world, uh, my revelation uh, provoked the demission of the Minister of Defense, of the Chief of the Secret Service. It was a big crisis. But after that, there was uh, two lessons. First lesson, if you want to bring big story, you must accept that it will be a fight. And you must be strong. Uh, you must be strong. And the second uh, lesson is that uh, democracy, it's uh, an ecosystem, a complex ecosystem. It was a pity in this story that uh, I reveal the lying of the government, of the power and so on, of the state. But after that, there was no, no investigation in the parliament of the, 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 the representant of the nation. The power lie to all the world, we want to know, no. They prefer to no ask question because it was the secret of state, the secret service, and the there highest was a, possible individuals involved. It was, yes, it was the alliance of the right and the left, to like the three monkeys. They don't want to know. And uh, the, that the two lesson: a lesson for the journalists: you must fight for the truth, and it will be always the same. And second, you must fight for. A real democracy, for a democracy with power, counter power. That's that was my story, <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> You've been doing this for, for so long, and in, in, uh, in such high areas. You know, we should mm. mention that you were editor in chief of Le Monde mm. uh, for for a very long mm. time. And we're thinking, um, what do you think the role of journalists today, uh, and what do you think it should be? Is, are they fulfilling the role they should have? I think there is a. It's a big moment for journalism, not a difficult moment. It's a very glorious challenge. <laughs> you know, you can take journalism as a work. You want to have, get a job, you want to pay you, <laughs> okay, your apartment and so on. But in this time, journalism, uh, it's an encounter with a great democratic challenge. Because we, we are in a very big crisis, a big transition time. Not only the digital revolution, but all the ecological crisis, civilization crisis, geopolitical crisis. It's a new world. There is an old world which uh, it will die, but he, he, he don't want to die. He's there, there, the old world. And there is a new world. And in this moment, like at the beginning, like in the 19th century, like at the beginning of the democratic challenge, the journalism is not only a job, not only a profession, it's a soldier. 
of, of a big question, the right to know. We need the right to know. The people need the right to know. Not only the freedom of speech, the right to know. Because there is big power, finance power, economic power, political power, state power. They are more and more linked and they don't want they don't want to give information. They want to take like a privacy, like private information for them, for power. And that's a great battle. It was a battle in the Mediterranean when the Arab Spring. It's a battle for us in our democracy. It's a battle with hero like uh, Edward Snowden or Julian Assange. And for me, that's, that's the first point. The second point, is that the digital revolution, uh, it's for journalists not the problem, but the solution. <laughs> because we must take the digital revolution to reform journalism with a new trust to the public. By the way, it's digital revolution, it's revolution, it's the link, link to the people and the leaks of the information. And that's a new challenge, and that's why we create uh, Mediapart as a laboratory to prove that we can do a best, more sustainable, more quality, more serious, more investigate journalist in, with the, all the technology of the digital world. That's amazing, yeah. Um, so I'd like to ask, um, would you agree there's a current of uh, of kind of populist anger at the moment amongst, uh, you know, definitely Western Western countries like America, we're seeing with yeah. the rise of Trump, and it, even in France with uh, Le Pen. Uh, what would you say is uh, causing this? Because it seems to be directed towards minorities. You know, we have the refugees, and you, you, you've written a book uh, about this issue about xen uh, xenophobia and uh, Islamophobia. Um, so, what would you say is the is the cause? Is the root cause of this? The root cause is the crisis of what we call Occident. Our world, Europe, during five centuries, was upper all the world. We go in all the hill, all the continents. We don't say, tok, 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 can I go there? We arrive with uh, our army, our uh, money, our uh, commerce, our church. <laughs> and uh, it's ending now. And if you think Mr. Trump, Mr. Putin also, Mr. Mrs. Le Pen, but also some of our neo-conservative neo -conservative in France, what, what they fear? Multiculturalism. They want I, what we call in French nation identitaire. I, only one identity. I don't think that people born racist that people, human people, want to hate other people. It's a political creation. Political creation to protect the power. The power, if uh, we are in battle, your origin, your color of skin, your religion against mine, for the power, it's good. We are fighting and we don't discuss of our common causes. What we have in common, our work, where we live, it's a common link to go together per, and that's the democratic uh, hope. No difference of origin, of religion, of condition, of appearance. We are the same and we discuss of what? Not, not of our specificity, but what we got in common. How do you, do you find your own humanity? when you discover other people, all form of minority, minority linked to the origin, to the religion, to the sexuality, to uh, the, uh, the, the gender, to all, all minority. And we, we, we must take this question of minority as the big challenge to create a real pluralist democracy. This is the important thing. We need to remember our common interests rather than be, allow ourselves to be divided and conquered as societies. The difference between metadata and data I would make is yeah. pretty simple. <clears throat> in, in data, what that means, I'm looking at your conversation, yeah. listening to it, or looking or reading a transcript. So it gives me a look in depth in what you're doing at that time. 
metadata gives me the view of who you're doing with all over, all the time.